me for that. All right, so for now, I'll walk back to my guest, Opio Wandai. He's still here. I can see he's uh, reading the newspaper uh, very keenly just to get to understand, you know, what this petition really is all about. And uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, has come out is what if indeed, you know, these allegations that have been made by this petitioner, Derek Ngumu, are actually, you know, <coughs> brought to life. We see, we have evidence and it's proven that indeed there was that illegal, quote unquote, contact between the judges and uh, the uh, NASA lead counsel. <coughs> the, there will of course be due process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's the inherent right of every Kenyan, <sighs> every citizen, to file a petition on whatever matter mm -hmm. they deem fit. Uh, if and when this petition uh, uh, goes full course, right. the facts will be uh, laid bare and uh, a decision will be arrived at uh, one way or the other. Yeah, what we must be very careful is to avoid being seen to be engaging in uh, public lynching mm. of these judicial officers. Yeah, that would be very unfortunate. You All know, right. we are trying to to nurture a, 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 a system where institutions uh, flourish. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you must also recall that Kenya has come a long way in terms of the uh, independence of the judiciary. What we are witnessing uh, currently mm -hmm. is basically the benefits of, of our 2010 <coughs> constitution, uh, which has strengthened the judiciary and has made the judiciary truly independent. Mm. Yes, uh, some of the judgment that was delivered by the Supreme Court a while ago could not have been envisaged right. yeah, in the old uh, order. Yeah, and uh, that's why you see people who still have their hang-ups. Yeah, people, oh, <coughs> people who still think that this country uh, needs not to move uh, are, are concerned that uh, such judgments could be delivered uh, as, as they see. Yeah. All right, uh, Njogu Baru, I'd like to hear your comment on this one and um, really put into to, to focus the fact that this Supreme Court ruling really was lauded, you know, in the continent and even outside. It, it came as something that put Kenya on the map. But here we are in a situation where there's stones being thrown at it. What will be the impact? Thank you, Betty. Uh, I would first like, uh, like by, to start by stating that uh, mm -hmm. Supreme Court is a very high, is one of the highest institutions of the land, and uh, the decisions they make are, have far-reaching implications. In the United States of America, Supreme, Supreme Court judges actually declare their political allegiance, mm -hmm. which side of politics they do support, either de Democrat or Republicans. So what I'm saying in that, why I'm saying that is because uh, Marang, uh, Justice Maranga said clearly that it's going to abide by the fidelity of the Constitution and uh, fear of God. I hope before they start making the rulings, mm -hmm. they are going to make these disclosures. So if there are some irregular contact, it's good for them to tell Kenyans to, de to, to declare that we as judges and these contacts before, and uh, so that they can assure us that these contacts, even if they were there, they don't affect their objectivity or the neutrality. The other thing I would like to hear is from uh, the NASA leadership, in particular, Raira Morodinga, who was quick to applaud the decision by the Supreme Court, which annulled the August 8 elections. <coughs> I would like to hear his objective comment of mm -hmm. these allegations against the judges, either proven, uh, at this particular time, either proven or not. I would like to, him to, say, uh, to hear him say, if such things happen, they're improper. It is not good to be just looking at the side of the bread which is battered all the time. And it's the time for Kenya now to fight for the bigger picture, as Opio Adai says. All right. And it's good to borrow from Steve Biko, who <laughs> said that it's good to live, to die for an idea that you live, than live for an idea that you die. I think the idea of getting to power by any, at any cost, without the, the, the support, without the support of the Kenyan people, using the background maneuvers, should not be one of the objectives that NASA should pursue. NASA should pursue the objective of having a free and fair election, they are saying, and not playing side tricks. Finally, I'd like to say that in this country, what is going to unlock Kenya, to unlock us to move forward, mm -hmm. is holding the election. This election must be held, because that election, we cannot, we cannot undo the determination of the Supreme Court judges. Right. <laughs> right. So, I am surprised and, and uh, I want to condemn this uh, attitude by NASA 
that they are coming in, on any discussion they are attending, they are attending the conditions, which clearly so shows that one of the biggest objective they have is to ensure that Kenyan, Kenya doesn't go to an election so that we can put this country into crisis or in what they call a chaotic government or an anusukumukati government. As, right. I, as I conclude, I want to remind Opio Adai that is not anticipated in the Constitution. What we know the Constitution anticipates is that the president will be president until another president is elected. So right. it is the interest of NASA right, right. to withdraw all these roadblocks they are putting to stop election from taking place. Betty? All right, I'd, li I'd like to hear, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, uh, sentiments of Opio. Now, he's raised quite a number of issues. And, yeah. you know, one that has been echoed by quite a number of Jubilee leaders is that, you know, NASA actually does not want this election uh, to happen because of all the demands that they've put across. Um, what is your feeling about that? Well, Betty, you know, that is a tired narrative. And uh, it uh, cannot uh, wash. What I mean is uh, mm -hmm. that... NASA, under the leadership, the very, very able leadership of Raila Mulodinga, has been very consistent, very consistent, even before the elections of 8th August, that we want nothing short of credible, mm. credible, transparent, free and fair elections that meet the requirements of not only the Constitution, mm -hmm. but the other uh, 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 appropriate laws that govern elections mm. in this country. Mm. And that is the demand that we continue to give, even now. There aren't really conditions. <laughs> they, are, they are basically what the Constitution and the relevant laws dictate. Mm -hmm. uh, what we find uh, 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 unsettling is why Jubilee would be uncomfortable with the holding of free, credible, fair, transparent elections, if indeed they are convinced they have the numbers as they continue happening. There is certainly no evidence that NASA under Raila Odinga is interested in getting power through the back door. Anyone who wants to get power through the back door does not really have to campaign all this time, does not really have to go out there and explain to mm -hmm. Kenyans their policies. So those are, in my view, uh, diversionary tactics. Well, you, you, you know, they're saying that, you know, even NASA is not even campaigning, so that's the reason why there's a lot of feeling that they're really not ready to go what, for this election. What, what constitutes campaigning according to Jubilee? <laughs> we are campaigning according to our own understanding, what campaigns entail. Mm. And we are doing it fairly well. We're doing it fairly well. Mm -hmm. in, in any case, even as we speak, Kenyans are long decided as to where they'll vote. We're just reminding them of the failings of this uh, regime, okay? Okay. Uh, and, 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 and therefore, it's not for, for, for Jubilee to determine for us uh, whether we are campaigning or not. What is important is that we put in place an environment, mm -hmm. an infrastructure mm -hmm. that will enable credible elections to, right. be, to be done. But All before right. that, before I conclude, it must also be underscored mm -hmm. that we are not simply issuing veiled threats. What we are saying is that if we cannot have credible elections, within the meaning of the Constitution and the laws, then there can possibly be no elections. That's something we have to continue saying so and, these guys uh, understand. Yeah. And NASA abides to, uh, abides to that. I, I'd like to bring in Njogu, and just as you wrap up your final um, uh, thoughts, and I'll ask you something that I've, I've, I've always asked uh, leaders uh, drawn from Jubilee. Are you comfortable with the status as is of how the IEBC is currently constituted? Um, you know, putting into consideration that the Supreme Court, you know, um, raised quite a number of issues about the process that IEBC undertook with its election. Is Jubilee Party comfortable with everything as is, with, you know, no changes, uh, you know, in the IEBC and really with the process? Uh, uh, that's a good question, Betty, and I want to say that uh, Jubilee Party is not blind, but uh, as the President put it clear is that... Uh, Mm -hmm. We do not agree with the ruling by the Supreme Court, but we abide to it. What is happening now is that uh, if we have to change anything in the Supreme Court, anything mm -hmm. that concerns commissioners, it will take at least six months or so, because it's a procedure. So if we are going to contemplate changing one of the commissioners or two of the commissioners, it, it will not be having the October 17th or, or October elections. Mm. So. If there are some reasonable changes which could be proposed through, by, through a bipartisan manner, 
I don't see Jubilee uh, rejecting it. What is happening is that uh, uh, NASA is coming as if it's the one who wants to supervise the elections. They want to see what should be done and it has to be done. NASA should know that in the Supreme Court ruling, right. there was no fault found on uh, the President Hulu Kenyatta. This uh, and Maraga stated clearly. So it's not that NASA won or Jubilee lost. The issue is actually on IBC. The other thing I would like to put it is that uh, even if you uh, now the target from NASA is on Cheloba, even removing Cheloba at this particular time may not be a solution because who right. do you put at this particular time mm. and masters the procedures in ten or so days? You may be adding into a deeper, uh, deeper situation where if you do that. Okay. So as much as we may be, you know, we may not be hundred percent comfortable. We are thinking that it is good for us to respect the constitution and respect the decision of the Supreme Court that the IEBC will conduct this general, these uh, repeat elections. And today, when the ruling is made, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court is going to pronounce itself who, and who is culpable okay. within IEBC on what happened. And one of the things I'm finding it difficult right. to contemplate is that we the Supreme Court mm -hmm. decided to deny us 21 days through which we should have used to put these uh, things in place. Finally, I'd like to say that the issue by my friend very Opio finally, and I yes. about elections, very finally, I want to say, very, very finally, <laughs> is that uh, I think to me what, uh, NASA, what he's putting up on behalf of NASA is a very pedestrian uh, approach because it's clear they don't want elections. All right. It is clear. Some of them have tried to get power through the back door in the past, like 1982. And, and Jopio Andai has could not have gone. to that. And mm -hmm. if they, yes, and I want to say that, let them stir up. Let them be ready for election right. on October 17, so that whoever gets the biggest number of votes is declared president. But we don't okay. want to anticipate any level of sabotage from NASA. Thank you, Betty. All right. We, we, he's had you, uh, Njogu, but we're joining us from our city center studio. He's a former member of parliament for uh, Gishugu constituency. Here in studio, I had Opio Wandai, who's a Gunja member of parliament. Uh, we'll be getting to see what happens in the next coming days, uh, Opio. Thank you for your time. Thank you.